Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Hope you're all still staying safe out there. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Cyberverse Deluxe Class Grimlock figure. He's one of two new figures in the second wave of the Macadam assortment. And he depicts, you know, a very cartoon accurate Grimlock. And also comes with a very cool fire blast effect that he can, you know, shoot from his mouth. A forearm and hand for Macadam, and you can't see it very well, but a crown for the dino mode. So if you see my reviews, you know how these things go. We're gonna take a look at Grimlock's packaging, all the different sides. We're gonna open them up, see the instructions. We'll look at the little build a figure piece, and then we'll see Grim himself in both the dino and robot modes. We'll be doing a lot of comparisons, group shots, all that fun stuff. And then at the end, I'll get my final thoughts. So Grimlock is just, just from looking at him, just looks very cool. He has these really interesting cartoony proportions, uh, very reminiscent of like an animated figure as in Transformers animated. Uh, it's got a lot of matte paint on him, which is interesting. You know, usually Grimlock's kind of shiny in most of his appearances, but it does help the cartoon aesthetic to give him kind of that cell shaded look. He's also the first Grimlock for Cyberverse that comes with an actual mouth instead of just having the plate going over his face. So that's cool. Uh, you know, while I generally prefer the, the face plated look for a Grimlock character, it is neat to get that variety in there, and honestly, it's a very well-sculpted piece. And we'll take a, a closer look at that when I get them open. But it's actually kind of cool. It gives him a lot of personality. And, you know, the new Cyber Scrimlock was a kind of a fun little twist on the character where he's kind of an intellectual and a sociolite in robot mode, and then he becomes the classic, you know, kind of dumb Grimlock character in his dino mode. So it's a fun little spin there. If we go ahead and turn him and see a full render of the McAdam Builder figure, just so you get an idea of what that looks like. And on the back, we got renders of Grimlock in his dino and robot modes. Up here, he's, his function is Legendary Dinobot King. And you can see he's got a crown. His like special attack is called Chomp Jaw, which doesn't really seem fitting for a fire blast type move, but okay. Now, I don't know if this crown is in any way compatible with the robot mode. I have a feeling it's not, which is a shame, but maybe we'll be surprised. Uh, we'll find out once we get this guy open. And then here you just have the layout of the first assortment. You got his wave mate Hot Rod here, Grim himself, and then RC and Thunderhal, who will be coming later in the year. And this guy actually takes 28 steps to transform, so he is by no means a simple figure. I'm actually very impressed with this. I like the fact that you can have a Grimlock at this small of a scale and have him not just be like a really cheap, simple toy. So, digging that. And then, over here, we just have our typical Autobot lineup of Hot Rod, Optimus, and Bumblebee. All right, here we have the instructions, and right off the bat, you'll notice that his robot mode's wearing the crown. So, yay for that. He actually can wear it, It's great. Uh, he's also wielding his fire blast as a club, which is odd, but I guess at least has somewhere to go. Um, I guess I mean I guess you can kind of pretend it's like his energy sword that he normally has. Uh, so we got the transformation to Dino mode. Finishes on the back side here. Shows you where to place his crown accessory, and then shows you where to place his fire blast in both modes, and then the placement for your new Macadam piece. And here is that piece of Macadam. This is his right forearm and fist. And it's just like the other one that came in the first wave, just, you know, mirrored. You got the nice little paint app right there on the front. You got the wheel painted, unlike his legs for some reason. And it's really it for paint. Now this is where he's gonna, he's gonna sock it into the upper arm there. And then his fist does have wrist swivel, which is cool, but just like the other one, it's greatly hindered by clearance issues, so he can only really rotate his fist that much. Um, unfortunate, but I guess better than no swivel, huh? All right, now we have Grim in his T-Rex mode. And one of the things I can say is based purely on just his appearance, this is gonna be the most accurate to the look of the TV show that I've seen on any of his toys, uh, especially with the very light gray they use here. It just looks much closer to the cell shading than the more metallic gray that the other toys use. 
Uh, so, you know, I like the look of this. However, things kind of start falling apart when you try to play with it because he's pretty close to being a brick. So he's got hip articulation here. And even though there's knee joints, they bend inward. There are bowl joints here. Um, and because of the way he's built, you can't bend his knees like back. So he's really lacking on the articulation. Also, the arms do not move at all. They're one solid piece with the, uh, oops, the side panels there. Tail doesn't wag or anything. So as far as posability, as far as being an action figure, he's actually kind of terrible. I mean, he doesn't feel like a deluxe class toy with the severe lack of articulation that he has. Uh, where he does have articulation is in the head. Uh, it's not supposed to come off. But, uh, really just the top and bottom jaws here. You can see the top opens, bottom comes down like this to a rather unnatural degree, but gives some flexibility with the posing of his head a little bit. And that's, I mean, that's really it. That and the hips, really all you get there. So I gotta say, while the dynamo looks good, it's very disappointing to play with. Uh, as far as the accessories, so you got a little fire blast thing here. Just open his mouth up. He's got the little three millimeter post there. Plug the flame effect in, close the mouth, or you know, maybe leave it open, whatever you wanna do. That's that. Now the crown, uh, it's made, you know, like we saw in the instructions to work with both modes. In this mode, utilize this little tab right here. Plug it in that slot on his head. Just push it down and he gets a crown. Looks kind of silly in this mode, honestly. Looks almost like a jester hat, but it is a cool accessory to have. You know, a nice little callback to his spotlight episode where they rediscover Grimm. So yeah, as a display piece, phenomenal. That's really all he's good for in this mode. And now to compare him with the other main size classes for Cyberverse. Here you have your Spark Armor Toy, you have your Ultra Class, and then your Ultimate Class. Now as I pointed out, the color scheme for the new Deluxe Toy is very different from these guys. Their, you know, dark silverish gray they use is much closer to the Generation 1 Grimlock Toy than how Grim looks in the new Cyberverse cartoon. Uh, each one of these is quite different from one another, uh, having varying levels of, you know, accuracy and posability. But a, a quick overview of kind of how they all compare, uh, the Deluxe Toy is the worst when it comes to articulation by quite a bit. All these other guys have moving arms, they have bendable knees. Heck, this one has a, a wagging tail, which is pretty cool. And they're... Uh, mouth movements are just more natural. They don't look like you're ripping his jaw open. You're not pulling a King Kong on him or anything. It's good. Um, this guy, his mouth doesn't really move much unless you activate this. And, yeah, there you go. Which is his little special attack, which honestly, as far as those gimmicks go, I think this toy has like the best out of all the Cyberverse. It's pretty non-intrusive. Just you know, have flames pop up on his back and out of his mouth when you activate it, so I like that one. Uh, as far as which one I think is the best overall, I actually kind of want to give it to the Ultra Class. Um, his only downside is that the head doesn't articulate very much other than the top jaw being on a, like a spring tinge. But where he succeeds is he has these really great ball jointed hands. He doesn't have the visible fist syndrome that the ultimate and even this guy have. Forgot to touch on that, but yes, he has fists on the back of his feet. It's the other thing I forgot to hit him on. So that is a big issue for me. The fact that they couldn't engineer a way to not have his robot hands just sticking out the back of his feet really, really irks me. Going back to the Ultra Class, I just, I think he has probably the cleanest looking of the three standard release toys, uh, dinosaur mode. This guy, while cool and articulated, is just really too wide and looks odd from certain angles. This one, just 
doesn't doesn't do it for me as far as accuracy. So overall, I think Ultra actually kills the Dino mode. All right, now it's time for the transformation. Uh, remove any accessories that you might have on them. All right, first, we're gonna fold his fists and his claws down like so. I'm just kind of leave those out of the way. The head, you're gonna kind of lift this up and give him like a goofy overbite like so. Now for the tail, you're gonna take this piece on his back, lift it up, it's actually one of his feet. Separate the tail here, swing that out, bend this at like a 90, bend that, swing this part, and close it. Form the leg. Now this foot, kind of stretched out, needs to rotate back and go in like that to come a proper foot. Go ahead, rotate this. That's one foot done. To get the other one, we're gonna open these up a bit, really untab from this foot, pull this down, and you're gonna do kind of the same thing. So, swing this around, get in there, bring this forward, fix the foot. Now this mushroom peg on mine's a little tight, so if I'm not careful, it has a tendency to pop off the ball joint when I go to rotate it. Your copy may or may not do that. All right, so we got Grim standing on his own two feet. Most of the way done. Go ahead and bring his arms down, rotate them in a natural position. This part, we're going to swing downward, open this up, swing it back up, it plugs in like so, nice and tight. Rotate this away, fold it down. A little finicky. All right, here we go. So you want the dino head to be pretty much flush against the back. Then bring these back for that cool wing effect. And here we go. This is Grimlock's very cool looking robot mode. Very screen accurate too. Unlike his dinosaur mode, which is close to being a total brick, this guy's actually quite poseable. So he got his head on a ball joint, on the neck base there. His shoulders are ball jointed, ball jointed elbows, and fists don't do anything, unfortunately. Does have a waist swivel, ball jointed hips. He has thigh swivel on these mushroom pegs, though, like I said, my one's pretty tight. Single bend knee, and then kind of a hinge and swivel complex uh, ankle rock and tilt there. So overall, it's very poseable. Makes for a great action figure in this mode. So at least I got one of them right, you know? So overall, I really dig this robot mode. Now as far as his accessories, you can use his little fire blast thing like some sort of flaming club which again is an odd choice, but I guess they had to do something with it, right? So, pegs into his fist, a little tight, so it's kind of twisted in there. So he's got that. And then his crown, on the inside here, you can see these little like indents. Those accommodate the horns on his robot mode. So, best way to make sure you got this on right is that little tab for the dyno mode, it still goes in the back. You take it and you want to press it down till you feel it connect. There you go. He gets a crown in his robot mode too. And looks a little less out of place than it does in the dino mode, but it's still, it's kind of comically large for his head. I think he could have done better with a smaller crown, which honestly probably would have worked better for both modes. Made it look less like a jester hat, more like an actual crown. All right, now to compare the robot modes. Uh, first, the Spark Armor one, I just want to write off as just crap. <laughs> awful, awful interpretation of Grimlock. A little tiny head, doesn't have like the backpack or anything. I mean, it just, it looks terrible. I mean, as an action figure, it's okay. It's poseable enough and all that. Decent transformation, but not what you're looking for for something to put on your shelf. The Ultra Class 
while I think is cool looking, he is pretty lacking posability as well. And he is also missing the classic backpack. I mean, he does have the head just kind of draping down as like a butt flap. So he was good when he was like the only offering, but there have been better ones since. And now the ultimate toy. Personally, I really like the ultimate Grimlock. Even though it's a simpler children's toy, you know, even though it's not going to have the posability or the accuracy of the deluxe figure, just for what it is, it's really cool. It's a very big, beefy toy. Feels pretty solid. Has a decent level of articulation. Even the head turns, which is kind of rare for Cyberverse. And, I mean, he hits the accuracy cues very well. He's got the wings. He's got the dino head on the back. Transformation's pretty standard Grimlock stuff. Um, so even though, you know, he's not what I would call a collector piece, he is great at just being a Grimlock toy. If you have a kid or a niece or nephew or something that you're looking to get a gift for, honestly, get him that. 30 bucks, it is really cool. Great toy. But it's not the figure I'm here to review today. Just wanted to point out that I think it's a very quality figure. Um, from a collector angle though, he does take a lot of hits as far as accuracy, articulation, so I would still say get the Deluxe if you want something that looks good on your shelf as a cast member of the show. Or don't. Or get the big one. Just saying. Kind of like the big one more. Alright, so my final thoughts on the new Grimlock. I have very mixed feelings about this toy. Um, I'm very, very disappointed with the dinosaur mode. I think they cut a lot of corners when it came to enabling articulation. Like, there's no reason his dino arms had to be molded into the same piece as his little wing flaps. But there's just a cost saving measure. Um, the fact that there's no way to get his knees to bend properly in dinosaur mode, I think is another issue. Could have been saved with having some sort of swivel joint here between the ball joint and the forearm. Or just done something a little more similar to what all of the other Grimlock toys that they put out for Cyberverse have done. I mean, they can all bend their knees, and some of them are very inferior toys. So that's kind of my biggest gripe with the toy, and where I dislike it the most. He also, because he's a deluxe toy, he suffers from the same issue that Prime and Megatron do, is that he's just kind of way too small for the character. And uh, not just because of how he scales with other toys, though that is, you know, a bit of an eyesore. It just, it's hard to make an imposing looking, you know, dinosaur king who's only, what, like four inches tall or something? I mean, he's pretty tiny. And I understand how it would have been much more complicated to have different size classes for like a build-a-figure type setup, so I, I get why that happened. So I'm not going to knock it too much, but, you know, obviously I would prefer if he was bigger. I mean, there is a reason I like the Ultimate Class toy so much. He just feels like an appropriate size for Grimlock. Um, when it comes to the dinosaur mode, this is what I really like. He has most of the posability you would expect. Uh, some wrist swivel would have been nice, but, you know, based on the transformation, I wouldn't hold my breath too much. Uh, most of the rest of them is quite posable, though he does have some clearance issues with his shoulders because they're so big. But you can get most reasonable poses. Uh, he captures all the right looks of the character from the show better than any other toy so far. He is the first one to come with an actual mouthpiece instead of just a battle mask, so it is good to be able to have that option, shown without the battle mask. And I actually think it gives a much needed amount of character to the toy, and it really helps kind of capture the essence of the version of Grimlock we got in Cyberverse, where he wasn't a, a berserker or a big dumb brute. He was, you know, kind of a sophisticated battle commander. And you can kind of see that intelligence on his face there. Uh, the crown is a great touch. When they announced Grimlock, I was really hoping they'd give us the crown from the show, so I'm happy they did that. Um, kind of disappointing he doesn't come with a proper weapon, but I guess they decided a piece of fire was close enough to his usual sword. I guess. I don't know. Uh, dig the colors on him. It's not my preferred color palette for a Grimlock overall, but for this version of him, they really nailed it. I, I think going with the flat colors really helped capture the look of the TV show character. Uh, he's got quite a bit of paint on him too, right? Lots of yellow paint, 
a lot of red, black. Um, so they didn't skimp on the paint, unlike, say, Hot Rod, who <laughs> could really borrow some of that yellow paint from Grimlock right now. Heck, they even painted his little fingers there. So yeah, I guess he and Hot Rod are kind of opposites, where I think Hot Rod's molding was better, but he barely had any paint, where I think Grimlock could use, you know, some more mold improvements, but he is slathered in paint. So I guess he just kind of stole all the paint budget from Hot Rod. But anyway, I think that kind of encompasses my feelings on the toy. You know, great posability, great presentation as a display piece. A little bit lacking as an action figure, especially in the dino mode. Um, the visible hands on his feet are another big thing that really bugged me about it. So, you know, whether or not he's absolutely necessary for your collection, it's honestly kind of like most of the Cyberverse Deluxes. If you don't already have a version of the character you like, then sure, he's a, he's a great piece. He does enough right to not be a bad toy. And, you know, if you want to complete McAdam, obviously you got to pick him up. But if you're looking for a toy that you might find a little more enjoyable, honestly, get the Ultimate. It's $10 more, but it's like over twice the size of this and just a lot of fun as a figure. However, as always, that is just my opinion on this figure. What I really want to know is what you all think of him. Do you have any opinions on him that I failed to cover in this? Anything you want to say that maybe wasn't mentioned? Uh, do you think I'm being too hard on the toy? Too soft? Any and all feedback is welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know that you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the undisputed king of the dinosaurs, minuscule as he may be. And with all that said, I will see you next time.